morning, everybody. It is Monday, April 13th, 2020. It's time for a start of a new digital distance learning week and a brand new set of tasks for you to complete. Maybe even a project or two. Mm. All right, let's get started with some things. Hey, uh, first things first, there is no school on Friday. There's just not. You show up here in the morning, log into our Google Classroom. There's going to be nothing for uh, you to do because there's no tasks on Friday. There's no schools, no school for anybody in the state of Rhode Island on April 17th. That's Friday. Today, on the other hand, you've got some tasks. But before we talk about those tasks, we got to talk about the format of our Google Classroom. Now, up to this point, I have allowed Google Classroom to comment and make posts and share and I've given you guys that opportunity to kind of sit and chat with one another. Um, it's gotten kind of hard to find some of the assignments that are put on there. So as a result of that, I nixed your ability to comment. You may, oop, I said that wrong. You, I nixed your ability to post. You may still comment, but you may not make a post. The only posts that will be on our Google Classroom will be posts from me. They will be the posts that starts for the tasks for the day. And then above that post, there will be those specific tasks for the day. And then the next day's post. Okay, you may make comments if you have questions or concerns. You may make comments to say that, hey, I'm here today. You may make a comment to say, hey, how are you doing today? Um, let's keep those comments under control. Let's make sure that they're appropriate and uh, geared towards what we're doing. And one punctuation mark is enough. Just the one. I don't care how excited you are. You don't need 97 exclamation marks. You just don't. Um, if Again, if your commenting behavior gets out of hand, you're going to get muted. I'm not going to tell you that you're going to get muted or that you've been muted. I'm just going to mute you. Just you can't make noise. So let's make sure that that doesn't occur. Okay, folks, let's not get muted. All right. Um, this week, non-negotiable tasks. Same non-negotiable tasks that they always are. Let's go through. Check your Gmail. There's a message from me from this week. Kind of tells your parents it's going to go on, go on this week. You might want to check that out. Lexia for 20 minutes. Stamina reading for 20 minutes. Extra math. Those multiplication division facts are super important. Read works. There's a new set of article a day articles out there for you today. That last set is already done. I hope you did six of them. Because you can't do it now. The assignment's over. And there's a new set for you. This set is about interesting animals. Interestingly, everything that you'll be learning about for them is adaptations, which is everything that our current science unit is all about. It's about animal adaptations. At the end of the day, you got to send me an email that says, Hey, Mr. Lucas, I'm done for the day. Okay, you've got to leave a digital footprint somewhere so I can mark you as present for the day. Make a comment. Send me an email. Those two things, the easiest way to get it done. I can't argue with those. I can't miss those. Let's not miss somebody who's here and mark them as present or absent when they're not. So... Make that digital footprint for the day. Email. Easiest way to do that. End of the day. Monday tasks. Tasks specific to Monday. Today, April 13th. Figurative language. You started a figurative language document last week in which you had to identify, define, simile, and metaphor, and then give me three examples of each. And 99% of you did a pretty good job on that one. Some of you need to just adjust a little bit of things on that one. But we need to now add our new figurative language piece. This week, we're going to be looking at idiom and hyperbole, not hyperboil, hyperbole. People say it wrong. I don't know why. Hyperboil. No, not a thing. Hyperbole. So idiom and hyperbole. You're going to need to define what is an idiom and define what is hyperbole. And then you need to give me three examples of each. I know. It seems really hard. You'll be okay. You can figure it out. Um, after you finish the figurative language updates on idiom and hyperbole, you've got an assignment that you've got two weeks to do. This one is kind of like a project. Yeah, but this isn't a project. This is a poster. This poster is your idiom poster. There is a assignment post titled Idiom Poster. Your idiom poster should be a poster you create. On that poster, you're going to choose an idiom, your favorite idiom. Your idiom should be funny. Funny idioms really make the best posters. Your poster is going to say your idiom, and then it's going to give you the figurative meaning and the literal meaning. It's also going to give you an illustration showing you the figurative meaning and an illustration showing the literal meaning. And there is a post on that post. When I say post, I mean PDF attached to that post that outlines the entire assignment for you. Please check that out. Send me an email if you have any questions. There's even an example on that one 
Oh my goodness, take your time. You've got two weeks to make this poster, two weeks. So you had better put a quality amount of effort into it. If you just send me a stick figure image and say it's my best drawing, <clears throat> I'm gonna make you redo it. I'm not gonna be nice about it, all right? You guys are capable of some amazing things when you put your minds to it. So put your minds to it and do something awesome, all right? Go outside, collect some natural materials. Go digging through the basement. Maybe you could find some cool newspaper stuff in there. I don't know. You gotta use materials around the house. Don't go to the store. Don't buy stuff. That's not safe. Use the materials you have around the house. Use natural materials you can find outside and make yourself an idiom poster. The only con constraints is your imagination. So make sure that you're doing your best on that front to put in some quality effort and create something that you are proud of and are happy to show off because you're going to have to send me pictures of not only the process and the finished product, but we're going to take those pictures and we're going to share them on our Google Classroom. Everybody's going to see them. You better make something you're proud of because otherwise you're going to stick out like a sore thumb. Hmm, was that an idiom? I wonder. Uh, idiom poster assignments. Hey, it's Monday. If we were in class, we'd have art. We're not in class, but you still have art, so go visit Ms. Thompson's Google Classroom. Start some of those art tasks today, please. It's Monday. Let's do some art stuff. You've got a Math Number Corner video up there. There's a second video along with that one, and that one's on student workbook pages. The student workbook pages look like this. Yeah, yeah. These can be kind of difficult, so you're going to want to make sure that you uh, watch the video so that you understand how to do it, all right? I would like those for Wednesday, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have it done by Wednesday, that's a problem. It's going to be late. If you have it done before Wednesday, you can send it to me. To send it to me, you should send me a picture. Click, click, and send it in an email. You can take a picture on your Chromebook. It's pretty cool, and then you don't have to get your parents involved at all. You can just take the picture. You can upload it, send it right to me. Problem solved. Get a picture of that assignment, get it sent off to me, please. There is also a math prodigy assignment. Yep, 20 questions. It's all about division. Let's get on there. There's also an ELA freckle assignment. This one is about the subject matter is email and internet communication. There are two assignments that come along with that one. They're both due uh, by Wednesday, please. On that freckle assignment, one of them is a short answer question, and the other one is a writing response. So you're getting a writing and a short answer, multiple choice response on that one, please. All right, so take your time. When you go into freckle, you're going to click on assignment. You're going to go into the ELA portion. It's not a math assignment. It's an ELA assignment. All right, folks, Wednesday. I'd like that to be squared off by Wednesday. Today we posted the new chapter of Rump. Rump. Chapter 29, and the last thing inevitably coming at you is word of the day and your word of the day is brought to you by landon clark and the word is inevitable inevitable add inevitable to your word of the day document make sure that you define it use it in a sentence give me the part of speech on that one remember you're adding to the document you've already created you're not creating a new document at this point your word of the day document should have like 12 entries I just guessed. It might have 15 entries. It might have nine entries. You should have one entry for every day of digital distance learning we've done so far. All right, folks, get on that assignment. Get it started. Get it done. Get it done by Wednesday. It's Monday. Everything that I gave you today is due on Wednesday, folks. Take your time. Do your best at it. I'll see you again tomorrow morning. Send me an email if you have a question, comment, concern on things. Wash your hands. Stay safe and I'll catch you next time. Have a great day, everybody.